50k edition PC build 2023. Building PCs is one of my favorite things to do on our channel guys. We built so many PCs, 1 lakh edition PC build, 75k PC build and also your dream gaming PC setups. So in these videos only lately I've been getting so many comments from my audience and you people basically asking like Vimal bhai can you build like a brand new 50,000 rupees PC build 2023 edition and today in this video I will be doing that. I actually spend a lot of time like choosing best components, best configuration around this price point and what I'll be showing you in this video right it's gonna blow your mind the kind of performance you can expect over here is like totally next level guys and this is a very well balanced all-rounder PC I would say it's great for productivity purpose learning purpose especially students keep looking to build PCs for coding programming purpose right or even take gaming into consideration also this PC can very well handle all of these applications you people will get to see the performance anyhow in this video so first of all right this is not going to be just like a performance benchmark or anything like that this will be like an in-depth tutorial on how to build and assemble your PC yourself. It's actually very easy. A lot of people actually think that it's quite hard and they can't do it themselves at their home, especially if this is your first time trying it. But don't worry, I'm there now. I'm here to help you out. Step-by-step -step tutorial and guidance I will give you in this video. So just watch this video till the end and you can build your own PC in no time. So before we get started with the build, first of all, let me tell you about the components I've chosen for this PC. First comes the CPU and for this build right I've chosen Intel's 12th gen platform i5 12400F so this is based on Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake platform and offers up to 6 cores and 12 threads with a turbo clock of up to 4.4 gigahertz and this is one of the best value for money CPUs you can actually buy around this price point guys it costs only around like 12,000 12,500 rupees in the Indian market and offers really good performance you people will anyhow get to see the performance during the benchmarks part and coming to the motherboard Obviously, since we are going with Intel's 12th gen CPU, we need a compatible motherboard with the LGA 1700 socket, right? So these sort of motherboards can be usually a bit expensive, but since we are a bit, you know, limited budget of only around 50,000 rupees, I went with a H610 motherboard. There are plenty of variants available in the market. Today, I particularly went with MSI's Pro H610M G variant of this motherboard, and this one actually offers lots of interesting features for this price point. It's an entry-level motherboard from the brand, yet offers next-gen connectivity which might be very hard to find on a very affordable entry-level variant of this motherboard guys. First thing is it supports PCI 4.0 lane so you can even use newer gen PCI 4.0 GPUs over here. Plus it also supports PCI M.2 slots as well. You can use faster storage drives over here which will offer you much better results compared to your regular hard disk or SATA. And not only that you're also getting Wi-Fi integrated also which is like very rare to see in this price point guys. So based on all these factors we went with this particular variant and it's also like very cost effective. I'll leave all the pricing details at the end of this video. So keeping that aside and finally coming to the cooling solution. Now I didn't want it to spend a lot of money over here. A simple air cooler will get your job done. And for the same purpose, we will be using Deep Cool's AK400 air cooler. This is something I've been using a lot in my recent builds. First thing is main reason for that is it's very affordable. It costs only around like 2,300 rupees and yet offers really good thermal performance. This is more than enough and well suitable for the Intel 12th Gen i5 that we will be using in this particular configuration. CPU done, motherboard done, cooler is also done. Now let's talk about the GPU. So choosing a GPU around 50,000 rupees budget can be quite a bit task. Lots of confusion is there among people. Which one should they go for? But don't worry, I am here to help you out. So I've already made the whole analysis guys and I've chosen the best possible combination you can buy. And for this particular variant, we are going to be using AMD's Radeon 6600. Based on RDNA 2 platform, this one features up to 8 gigs of GDDR6 memory and offers really good 1080p level gaming. So you can do like 1080p ultra gaming with excellent frame rates. I will show you in this video. You can even play games like Cyberpunk 2077 or brand new 2023 titles also at ultra graphics with really good results. You people will get to know all of that in this video. Now moving on, let's also talk about the memory and storage part. A lot of people do not know and usually compromise in this section. They go for like cheaper hard disk or maybe like cheaper SATA SSD. No, you don't do that. By doing this, you're actually increasing your risk of failure, guys. And data can be very important. So always go for something like a trusted and reliable brand. And maybe go for like a newer gen hardware. Price difference is also not there that much. You'll get like much better and faster results and overall durability is also increased. So today in our case, we'll be using Kingston's value 
program ddr4 edition 32 gb kit clocked at 3200 megahertz again choosing the ram variant and configuration can totally depend on your requirements and also budget for example if you're using this pc mostly for like home purpose there you don't need more than 8 gb 8 gb will easily get your job done again if you're using this pc maybe for like gaming purpose here i would advise you to go for like a 18 to 2 16 gb dual channel configuration minimum 3200 megahertz also keep in mind that the ram that you're choosing should be compatible with your motherboard as well for example in our case the variant we have is msi's pro h610m variant right this motherboard supports max of up to 3200 megahertz only so if you go for a more faster ram right it's actually pointless so choose proper configuration ram that is well suitable and compatible with the motherboard variant that you're going for and coming to storage part as i've told you just now guys a lot of people compromise over here due to tight budgets and usually go for like a slow hard disk or maybe like sata ssd don't do that simply by spending a little bit extra hardly it'll cost you around like 800 rupees 1000 rupees extra and instead of a regular sata m.2 ssd you can go for like a pci gen 3 or pci gen 4 ssd which will offer you like six to seven times faster data transfer results and this is what i'm actually using in this video kingston's nv2 pci gen 4 m.2 ssd it's an internal nvme m.2 ssd that sits on your motherboard and offers crazy fast read and write speeds up to 3500 mb per second uh, read speeds and 2800 mb per second write speeds we're almost coming to an end only thing left out is power supply i believe for this sort of configuration right a 650 watt power supply is more than enough and you can go for like a deep cool edition one hardly costs around like 4000 4500 something and that is pretty much it this is the basic configuration that you can go for around this price point i'll give you complete pricing details as well during the end of this video now let's quickly get started with the assembling and check out a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build your new PC. Building your very first budget PC like this is a walk in the park guys. Anybody can do it. Just watch my video till the end and you'll get like full information on step by step tutorial. First thing you'll need to do is install your CPU on your brand new motherboard. Since we have like a 12th gen platform motherboard, obviously you're getting LGA 1700 socket. Before placing the CPU, always make sure to align the Google triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the socket. And that's it. Just drop the CPU over here, lock the bracket over here and that's it. You're done with the CPU installation. Moving on let's install the ram stick this is our kingston's value ram over here you get two slots on this particular motherboard primary one and secondary one we will be installing this single stick of ram in the primary a1 slot so just open the lever align the notch on the ram with the slot and firmly push it until the lever locks itself and that's it this is how you install ram on your motherboard now quickly let's also install kingston's nvme gen 4 ssd as well this is an internal m.2 ssd right it goes and sits right on your motherboard just look at your motherboard's configuration and see where that PCI Gen 4 slot is. You need to insert it at a 45 degree angle like this and push it down and simply lock it with the lever. That's it, as simple as that. And you're done with both the RAM and SSD installation. Now take your motherboard and start fixing it in your PC case. Ours is a micro ATX motherboard Red h 610 m Pro series from MSI. It goes at the top area over here. Once you place your motherboard, align it properly with the screw holes on the case and start fixing your M4 screws in the case. Go in a zigzag pattern and start fixing your screws and mind you do not over tighten them you don't want to break your brand new motherboard right so keep these little little points in mind time to install the air cooler on the cpu but before that we'll need to install a little bit of thermal paste on the cpu you can apply it in multiple ways people go for like cross marks lots of dots but i usually prefer placing a little bit of paste at the center of the cpu has been working great for all my pc builds that i do on the channel Anyways, now take your brand new air cooler, in our case we have the AK400 and place it right on top of the CPU just like this and align the holes over here such that it match with the bracket of the air cooler. And that's it, start fixing screws on both the ends and 50% of your job is almost done. Now all that is left to do is install your CPU fan on top of this heatsink and connect your air cooler's cable to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. And ta-da, that is how you install your air cooler in your CPU. Now all that is left to do is install your GPU and also your power supply. So GPU goes in this PCI slot just below the air cooler guys, just below the CPU socket. And that's it, simply open the lever, place your GPU over there and push it until the lever locks itself. Now simply install your 650 watt power supply, connect all the cables in your PC and that's it, we are completely done with the assembling part. And there you go, here's our very first look at our fully assembled 50,000 rupees PC build. Mm-mm, looking pretty good right? Look at the cable management as well. Neat job right? What I'll do is I'll quickly power it on, show you some beautiful cinematic shots. Just sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> Now 
Now that is what I call a good looking PC on a budget. Clean, minimalistic and modern. But don't go by the looks huh, it's actually a powerhouse on the inside. It's powered by Intel's 12th Gen i5 and AMD's Radeon 6600 which has 8 GB VRAM and it's a very well balanced PC that you can build specially for students around this price point. You can literally use it for any sort of workload, either it be creative applications, productivity, programming and learning or even gaming as well. To show you all of that, we will be running variety of benchmarks and apps in this video and check out its performance. Starting off, we've got a couple of benchmarks over here. On Geekbench 6, we got a single core score of around 2295 and a multi-core score of around 7831, which is quite impressive for an affordable CPU of its segment. I've ran Cinebench 2024 as well and got a single core score of around 94 points and a multi-core score of around 608 points. Overall, benchmarks look quite promising and we'll get into the real-world testing as well in a moment. But before that, let's also quickly put our Kingston's NV2 PCI Gen 4 SSD performance to a test as well. For that, I've ran Crystal Disk Mark and here are the results. Just look at those sequential transfer speeds. Excellent results, guys. We were getting around 3194 MB per second sequential read speeds and up to 2542 MB per second write speeds, which is almost six to seven times faster than your regular SATA SSD. And you can't even start comparing it with your old school hard disk at all. This PC is great for your day to day sort of usage, whether it be at your home, office, or even college. It's gonna perform very well, especially for students. You guys wanted me to build an all rounder PC. On on budget right and this might be the one for you you can use it for educational purposes like coding learning programming as well and not just that it's great for even creative applications like improving your photoshop skills or maybe like premiere pro video editing skills for you people i've actually ran a couple of adobe applications and intensely tested both adobe photoshop and also premiere pro as well i've done a bit of 10-bit raw photo editing color grading and even ai generative workloads as well and had a really good time during my usage period no lag no stutters and what photo editing you can even do up to like 2k and 4k video editing as well on this sort of configuration as you can see timeline performance was snappy all thanks to that faster 3200 megahertz ddr4 ram and also not to miss out kingston's nv2 pci gen 4 ssd well that was about the creative and productive applications performance but now actually comes the real part like how is the gaming performance on this system because i'm pretty sure students are definitely gonna use it for gaming as well right in your free time and you would obviously like to know how does it perform in that segment. For you people, we will be playing a couple of AAA title games and I'm telling you right, you are gonna be blown away by the results. So quickly jumping into the gaming benchmarks, the first game we will be playing today is Spider-Man Remastered and we're playing it at 1080p resolution, very high graphics preset and as you can see right now, on an average we were getting around 85 to 90 FPS and sometimes going above 100 FPS also. Holy smokes, mind blowing results guys. I mean, did you people expect that? Muska smooth gaming experience at 1080p resolution. You are gonna enjoy gaming on this PC. And yes, you can even do a bit of entry level 1440p gaming as well, not just 1080p. Aram se chalega. And best part is, just look at those thermals, both CPU and GPU. Both were well under control and despite gaming for like long hour sessions of 45 minutes, one hour also, CPU was running at only around 54-55 degrees centigrade. Deep Cool's AK400 was definitely doing a good job considering it's a super affordable air cooler. And not just Spider-Man, I've also played a couple of other games as well, especially like Cyberpunk 2077. Now that is a very graphic intensive game and you might be curious to know about the performance, right? So right now we are playing this game at 1080p resolution high graphics preset, no DLSS, no FSR technologies and on an average we were getting around a consistent and smooth 60fps gaming experience. See, if you're able to run Cyberpunk like this on this configuration, then I'm pretty sure you can easily play almost any AAA title in 2023. Hands down, you are gonna be very happy and satisfied with this setup and configuration. So that's it, time to wrap it up. Before we actually end the video, right, let me go through the component pricing and talk about the budget. Intel Sci-Fi 12400F is quite affordable and is priced only around like 12,000 rupees in the Indian market. Looking at MSI's H610M Pro series motherboard, now that is also super affordable, Pricing starts at only around 6,500 rupees. And if you talk about 
the GPU, this is one of the best GPU money can buy under 20,000 rupees, guys. AMD is ready on RX 6600 8GB edition, costs only around 19,500 rupees in the Indian market. Coming to the memory, we have both the units from Kingston. If you look at the RAM, we have Kingston's value RAM 3200 MHz. You can actually go for two setup configurations, either 16 GB kit or 32 GB, depending on the budget you have. If you go for the 16 GB kit, that will cost you around 4200 rupees, and 32 GB kit will cost you around 6900 rupees. And looking at Kingston's NV2 PCI Gen 4 SSD, 512 GB variant of this SSD is only around 3499 rupees. And lastly, coming to the cooler, Deep Cool's AK. 400 air cooler is priced at only around 2300 rupees and go for like a 650 or power supply from deep cool itself and that will again cost you around 4500 rupees and that is pretty much it the whole budget of this pc build comes down to only around 52,499 rupees well that is pretty much it this is what i wanted to share with you all in this video i hope you found this video useful and quite educational make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more such interesting videos and i'll see you all in my next one.